acoustics covers everything in all of our lives, whether it's transportation systems, cars and ships and um, aeroplanes, or the buildings we live in, uh, the places we go to socialize, restaurants, um, all of those things are covered by acoustics. And all of those things are dealt with by members of the Institute of Acoustics. This is what we do, whether it's consultancy, um, trying to design your block of flats so you have a nice place to live, whether it's researchers looking into the, the materials that your block of flats is built out of, um, whether it's people designing uh, submarines or air, aircraft to make them um, better places uh, and more effective uh, methods of transportation, weaponry, whatever else, then all of those things are covered by the Institute of Acoustics. And it's a place that brings all of those people together to share knowledge and to be a real repository of, of that technical knowledge in the UK and around the world for that matter. Part of taking acoustics to the decision makers is really important because um, they are not the specialists. They don't need to fully understand uh, the physics of sound, but we are here for them to, to help understand that. Uh, occasionally we provide briefing notes uh, and that sort of thing, enabling them to understand what's important about it. So if there's a debate about Heathrow Airport, then we can help provide the facts, the information that they can rely on. Acoustics is such a solution that must be applied throughout the future. Uh, my challenge really is, is to, um, to make sure we still have young people coming through into acoustics and also that pos the position or policy makers need to really understand the importance of acoustics and how that, how that influences everything in, in our lives. Once upon a time, uh, let's say 20 years ago, I could write a report about a particular project, housing development or whatever, and the report might have been half a dozen pages. That's all it needed to be. Now it probably will be 30 or 50 pages because I have to put more information in there because the reader, and the reader may be Joe Public, it may be a planning officer, it could be an environmental health officer, it could be an architect, an engineer. They are so better educated about some of the topic. So you have to provide them with rather more. And, and what you provide them with has to be entirely robust. And when you provide that information, because my company, we churn out reports every day of the week, not only must it be robust, it's got to be consistent in its approach, but we also have to keep up with uh, case law. That if there's been some decision, uh, we have to keep up with um, decisions that are made through the planning inspectorate. So we've got to be aware of what is happening around us, not just the science. We have to be aware of planning uh, law and policy. And for instance, as an institute, we try to influence that. Uh, we, 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 we have to ensure that the public are fully informed. And part of the way to ensure, ensure that they're fully informed is to make sure that we get in front of politicians or uh, the government departments and tell them things. Sometimes things they don't want to hear, um, but we've got to keep pushing uh, to raise the agenda of what we do. Because acoustics isn't just about, oh, that noise is a bit annoying. It's also about it can affect your health. And there are costs to society if it affects your health. And Governments like to know about cost to society because if they can balance how do they manage noise against what might be the costs otherwise, i.e. hospital admissions, early deaths, and things of that sort, um, then there's a good story to tell them. Do this, manage it in this particular way, and you save money for society and, and that's the sort of approach we've adopted you know over the years and uh, as i say as an institute we try to influence
policy by getting in front of government. In essence, we're here to promote the science of acoustics. We do that in a number of ways. Firstly, we do it for members by promoting their professional development. We also don't actually give them a license to practice, but the very fact that members gives them a credibility in the wig bad world out there. Acoustics also covers everyone's lives. And we're here to make sure that when politicians are making their decisions, they take acoustics into account. We're not a political organisation as such, but we are political with a very small p. What I mean by that is we're not here to make sure that HS2 happens in a certain way or third runways at Heathrow or wherever, but we're here to make sure that the science of acoustics is understood by politicians and considered when they and policymakers are making their decisions. Acoustics is also a major contributor to the UK economy. We have joint funded with the UK Acoustics Network a project to look at how much it contributes. And the law work is ongoing. We already know that it's over £5 billion a year. Um, one of the prime benefits of being a member of the Institute of Acoustics is the recognition that you gain for your skills and your knowledge in acoustics um, amongst your peers, but also in a wider professional arena. As a member of the Institute of Acoustics, um, you're part of a forum for discussion on the science and art of acoustics. And those discussions might be happening um, at a branch level in your local area, um, getting up to date on standards and guidance or specific technical areas. Or it might be uh, via attending uh, a national or international one or two day conference organised by the Institute. Two exciting initiatives are uh, marketing which is with the view of providing a better service, a better institute for our members, particularly young members. I mean it has been said that it seems to be an all persons game, the governance of the IOA and you're looking at one now and we want to change that, we want to balance the gender, we want to balance the the, um, the demography as much as we can. The other exciting um, initiative is in education. The Institute is almost unique in that it provides a, a portfolio of education and upskilling training um, through short courses, through its diploma which can be done remotely for people um, in the UK and abroad and it seemed that we should move into the 21st century much more firmly than we have been. Whilst it works really well and the quality is, is, is high, it's, it is recognised that we should have more online education and skills programmes. Yeah, the, the reason it's really important for us to try and get more young people into the industry is because there's a, a massive shortage of professionals in our industry. And if we don't start trying to get young people in now, we'll find that in the future there just won't be people there that can, can do that work. Um, so we, you know, we, we volunteer for ourselves because it's really good fun. We volunteer for the future of the industry because, you know, we need more people doing what we do, but we also uh, do it most importantly for the kids um, because they probably don't know that jobs like acoustics in acoustics um, exist. Now the Bursary Fund was set up last year as the IOA wanted to give access to people and its members in particular um, to funds to allow them to um, and to take opportunities that they might not be able to fund themselves or through their employers. So things like STEM activities that they wanted to develop for use in schools or to go on courses, either short term or long term, or to go to conferences. Again, particularly aimed at those that couldn't afford to, to do it through other means. So we pulled to, to apply and we've all 
um, make the um, call for applicants early in the new year for the for the new financial year um, and I'd say to people to look out for the adverts in the IOA bulletin or in the e-newsletters for more details of how to apply and when.